Psalms 47, oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph, for the Lord most high is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. Go down to verse 5. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praise with understanding. And then I like verse 8. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of people have gathered together, the people of God, the God of, of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God, he is greatly exalted. And let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we praise you today, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that the Spirit of God is moving in our church. We thank you, Lord, for those who have been saved those who are about to be saved and will be saved in the near future. Father, I pray that your spirit will move like a gentle breeze or a mighty wind in this place. I pray you'll bless every person that came, those that are watching, that could not be here. I pray you'll speak to them today. Father, we're, we're all in this together and we want people to be saved Father, we want people to be revived. We want to accomplish the vision and the task you have set before us. And Satan, by the way, we bind you in Jesus' name. We command you to get out of this place. We thank you, Lord, for the blood that you shed. It's so powerful. Father, be the King and Lord of our lives on this day. And yes, Lord, we thank you for heaven. We thank you that we're on our way. And God, I can't wait to get there. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. This morning, I'm going to begin a new series of messages. Getting Stronger in Christ is the title, or Being Strong in Christ. Strong churches are churches. Where it's people have a handle on the following principles that I'm fixing to give you or the following truths. We will be talking about these truths for the next six or seven Sunday mornings. There must be a starting point to these truths. And the very first one, and it's so very important, is the word worship. Preacher, I know all about worship. Well, we're going to find out today if you really know about worship. We will use several scriptures in the Word of God. See, worship has to be very important to you. It has to be very important to me. It has to be important to all of our church family if we're going to become stronger in our Christian life. And I want to get right into the message, and I want to give you four points. And the first point is this. We were created to worship. We as individuals, we were created to worship. The Bible says in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created, created the heavens and the earth. Now, the world we live in belongs to God. It does not belong to the kings of the world. It does not belong to the queens of the world. It doesn't belong to the Republicans or the Democrats. My friend, the world we live in belongs to God. He made everything in it. He created the light and the darkness, the sky and the heavens. He created the dry land and the waters and the fruit trees and so on it goes in Genesis chapter 1. See, God made every bit of it. Romans 11 says, From Him and through Him and to Him are all things. In other words, He made it all for Himself. In verse 27 of our first chapter in Genesis, the Bible says God created man, and the Bible says God put him in a garden. And by the way, men, I am so glad that He created a woman. <laughs> 
If he didn't, we would not be here today. God created a man, God created a woman, and they were there in paradise. And he gave them a special day once a week to remind them that life is more than punching a clock. There needs to be a time every week that we set aside as a church body and we come together and we worship Him in truth and in spirit. It's good to work. Everybody ought to be working. Even the people that are getting the checks that are able to work, they ought to get out and work. The word worship, is, it is mentioned, it appears 158 times in the Bible. There are a couple of things in Genesis chapter 1 through 3 to make, that it makes clear. Number one, when we worship, we will experience the blessings of what you might call paradise. Friend, when I'm really in the spirit in worshiping God, it seems like that I am experiencing a little bit of heaven on earth. Then number two, when we don't worship properly, there will always be a lot of problems. <laughs> the serpent came in this chapter, chapter 3, verse 1, and Eve fell into the trap, and right behind Eve, guess what? Adam followed along in verse 6. And my friend, that tells me again that Adam should have been the leader, and maybe Eve wouldn't have gotten in trouble. If you are married and you are the man of the house, you need to be the spiritual leader. You need to be the physical, emotional, financial leader in that home. And by the way, it's okay for your wife to make more money than you do. Just thought that would be a little extra. The result, look at chapter 3, verses 8. And, well, you're not going to look there because you're not there. I'm going to read it to you in Genesis chapter 3. Verses 8 and 9. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and he said, Adam, where are you? Now, mind you, listen. God knows everything. God knew where Adam was he just wanted Adam to know where he was. What happened? The Bible says they hid from God. Friend, we were meant to live in close communion with God. But you know that three-letter word, it always separates us from fellowship with God. And that word is sin. The story does not end in chapter 3, verse 8. God provided, the Bible says, animal skins to cover themselves and gave them a promise. One day he would reclaim his fallen world. Not only were we born, my friend, we were created to worship. As a church body, have we worshiped God this morning already in truth and in spirit? Secondly, we are redeemed to worship. And that is the message throughout the Bible. Now, do you remember when God chose Abraham? From Abraham, God formed a nation, Israel, the Bible says. And through that nation, he brought hope to the world through the sending of his son. Now, why did God redeem Israel from Egypt? Look at Exodus chapter 8 and verse 1. If you'll turn there with me. I hope everybody has their Bible. It's our road map on the way to heaven. Chapter 8, verse 1. Are you ready? The Bible says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve or worship me. God rescued Israel, so Israel might serve him. Israel might worship him. And then Exodus chapter 12, after the ten plagues, Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Let my people leave them and the Israelites go worship the Lord as you have requested. Now my friend, God deserves and God desires worship 
from the people He has created. The problem is sin. It's always sin. And to be thinking about ourselves. Think for a moment with me, if you will, about the tabernacle. Remember the tabernacle? The tabernacle put God at the center of their life. God put aside seven chapters in the Old Testament to describe the details of the tabernacle. Why so much information about a tent? You know why? The tabernacle emphasized priority in worship. There were no seats in the tabernacle. (laughs) They didn't come there, by the way, to be entertained. There's a lot of churches today, you've got to entertain them to keep them coming back. I pray that God is pleased with what we do right here. We're not in the entertainment business. We're in the heaven business. They went there to worship. They went there to worship God. And one of the ways they worshiped Him was through blood sacrifices. Here's a question. When they traveled through the Sinai Desert, going toward the Promised Land, where was the tabernacle? Well, the answer is right in the middle of the Israeli or the Israel's camp. The 12 tribes were arranged in a rectangular shape. Three to the north, three to the south, three to the east, and three to the west. And the tabernacle was right there in the middle. You know what? The tabernacle was where God met with His people. This showed them God was to be in the center of their life. Wow, friend, I got to ask you, is God right in the center of your life right now? I mean, is Jesus first in your life when you get up in the morning? When you go to bed at night? Is Jesus Christ, is He the Lord of your all your life right now? Not only the tabernacle, think about the holy days, and I'm not going to try to lose my voice. The holy days put God at the center of their calendar. Every seventh day, the people stopped to worship. And listen to this, it was not optional. Not to participate might mean that you might die. Then three times a year, there were major holy days for the Jews. And all the Jews would travel to the tabernacle, later the temple. Again, it was mandatory. All of this thought up by God the Father to put Him in the center of their lives. So why does God save people? Why does God save you and why does God save me? I want to tell you one of the great reasons and important reasons is to worship Him. That was true for Israel in the Old Testament and that was true in the New Testament times and it is true in the year 2021. We as a family must make worship at the center of our lives. And this is great, and please don't miss it. Miss it. We are God's temple. The Bible says, don't you know you are God's temple? And that God is, as the Spirit lives in you, friend. Listen, we don't go to the temple. We are the temple. We don't have somewhere that we've got to go to meet with God. Listen, God has come to live inside of us. And friend, that gets me excited. To know that the Spirit of God comes to live inside of me, I can't hardly imagine that. Our worship is not limited to three times to Jerusalem. It is not limited to three times a year to Hickory with church. Although some people come about three times a year. That's why I tell some people at Easter, Merry Christmas. <laughs> we, the body of believers in Hickory With, we are God's temple. And the heart of worship, it is always giving. When we worship God, you know what we do? We give Him something. 
when you come here to worship, your motive should not be to get something, but to give. So what can we give, God? Are you ready? We, are, we can give to Him praise. Man, if Baptists would ever get caught up in praising the Lord, you ought to be where I am looking at some of you. If we could ever get caught up in praising God. Friend, do you realize it is a privilege for you to get out of your bed and come to the church house on Sunday morning? Another thing that we can give to God is we can give Him our prayers. Friend, we better be praying. Praying for ourselves and for one another, for our family, for our friends, for our country. And we can also give Him our attention when the Bible is being preached. And then we can give Him our tithes and offerings. Oh, preacher, I knew that was coming. And we can also give Him our bodies. There is a lot we can give the Lord when we come together on Sunday, isn't it? When you and I come here and are truly worshiping God, we are not thinking about ourselves. What we want to give Him is what He deserves. Now, I want to give you a third point this morning. There are some wrong ways to worship. Now, stay with me. It's our nature to worship something. I mean, everybody worships something or somebody, even atheist. Satan is alive and well, and he doesn't want us to worship the right way. Isaiah 14, Satan said, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. You know what? Satan wanted to have what God had. Remember, G- Satan was, he tempted Jesus in the wilderness. Listen to what he said. He said to Jesus, all this I will give you, talking about the kingdoms of the world, if you will bow down and worship me. If Satan cannot take God's worship, he will try to ruin it. He will try to counterfeit it, or he will try to falsify it. He does all He can in our lives to try and get us to not worship the one and true God. And there are many wrong gods in our nation and our world. I mean, friend, Allah is not a real God. Hmm. Buddha is not a real God. Those that follow Scientology, friend, that is not real. The Jehovah Witnesses and Baal and so on. We go on and on and on. And friend, that is Satan's plan that they might follow what these people believe. Then some people think this. God doesn't care how you worship as long as you worship. By the way, it is a heart thing. And of course, that is wrong. What are some ways to worship God the wrong way? Okay, are you listening? How do people normally worship God? Here it is, as easily and as painlessly as they can. God, I'm going to worship you today, but it's on my terms. When it fits, Lord, into my schedule. As long, Lord, as I don't have to make a change, I'm going to worship. As long as they get something out of it. Some people worship religiously or traditionally. Going through the motions of worship. Friend, if there's ever a thing that is a drag, it is going through the motions of worship. We worship Him with our lips, but our heart is far from us and Him. See, religion is the work of man trying to impress God. I want to tell you to do something this morning. I want you to examine your heart. Worship is not a Sunday thing. Is it? It is a spiritual thing if we can call it that. But you know when we really worship God, we worship on Monday, not only on Sunday. We worship Him all the days of the week. 
Then another way is worshiping God for personal gain. How much time do you spend praying for improvements in your life instead of improvements in your attitude and for other people? That's a good question. You know, some people worry more about what others think instead of what God thinks. We go before the mirror and we want to look all prettified for everybody at church. Now, friend, I think you ought to dress yourself up as much as you can. I think you ought to put on some deodorant and cologne, all that good stuff. Smell good. But we don't do those things to be seen at church. Or we don't go out and buy things so we may be noticed at church. <laughs> If you are worshiping, you don't have any time to worry. And if you're worrying, you don't have any time to worship. One more to worship, way to worship wrongly is without any passion. Without any heart and no zeal. Oh, what a, listen, what a total drag. I mean, it's what's expected of me. This kind of worship is boring. No prayer life. No serious study of the Word of God. No burden to win souls. No commitment to church. And no thought about sin in our life. Friend, what a drag. I've said that three times already. See, that is worshiping the wrong way. Now let me give you, last of all, the right ways to worship. And I love this. Worship is an active verb. It is something that we do. See, it is very important to prepare yourself for worship when we are coming together. Now, you may do that the night before or you may do that the morning of. You prepare to worship by how? By getting your heart ready. You get your heart ready by being in the Word of God, not only on Saturday night or Sunday, Saturday morning, but every day during the week. And then you pray and you fix your thoughts on Jesus and all He has done for you. Here are some words, and I'm not going to give you the Hebrew words in the Old Testament, but these are what the words mean. First of all, the word means to kneel down or to bow down. That's what it means to worship God. The Lord in His greatness holds a place of importance in your life. Friend, have you ever bowed down to the Lord? Let me tell you this. Have you ever, or ask you, have you ever gotten down face on the floor before the Lord because you want to worship Him? And you realize He is God and you want to get down as low as you can go that you might worship Him. A second way to worship God the right way is to boast, to celebrate, and listen to this, to be clamorously foolish. First Chronicles, David wanted the Levites to lead the people in worship before the ark of the Lord to give thanks and to praise the Lord. Do y'all know it's okay to praise the Lord? And we have allowed our Pentecostal friends that we love dearly to take that away from us. We Baptists need to learn how to praise the Lord. And you can do that for sure in the church house. You can do that in your car by yourself. You can do that at work, in a ball game, whatever it might be. And then thirdly, listen to this. To shout loudly. Psalms 47, come everyone, clap your hands, shout to God with joyful praise. Amen. By the way, it's not about being loud. The focus is to worship the Lord with all of your being. I've been around people before and they all of a sudden got happy and they shouted and it scared me to death. But friend, they were in their spirit and that's important. Worshiping God. 
and then to sing praises. Sometimes to sing spontaneously. Now, we don't give out bulletins right now because of this dumb virus. But sometimes churches are so bulletinized. Is that a word? It is. That we cannot allow the Spirit of God to move in our midst. To sing praises and sometimes to sing them spontaneously. To sing, in other words, unrehearsed. (laughs) Unplanned praises to the Lord. I've always loved to go to the hospital and visit people because I care about them. But I always love to get on the elevator, especially with some black folks. Because some of them start singing in the elevator. To the Lord. All right, listen to this, Baptist. Extended hands. Raising your hands in thanksgiving to the Lord Jesus Christ. For saving us. Or to, your, or to raise your hands in complete surrender to Him. Friend, if you want to lift your hands in this church house, you go right ahead. If somebody says something to you, you come tell me. I'll get somebody else to take care of it. If you want to lift your hands to the Lord, you go right ahead. Anything that we do in the Spirit of God, you need to do that. And if you don't do that, when God says do that, you're being disobedient to Him. And then listen to this. The right way to praise the Lord and to worship Him, to touch the strings The Bible says in 150 of Psalms, Praise Him with a blast of the ram's horn. With the harp. (laughs) Listen to that. With the tambourine. And with dancing. (laughs) Baptists don't dance, preacher. If you get in the spirit sometimes, you might do a little jig. With the strings and the flutes, with the cymbals, the loud clanging cymbals. You know what it involves? It involves rejoicing and making music to the Lord. If you would get alone with the Lord and really worship Him, you might get up off your knees sometimes and you might just start singing a song. If you ever get mad at somebody because they cut you off on the road, hopefully it wouldn't be me that cut you off. You just start singing to the Lord. What we're talking about is worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Praising God is to be on our lips, and we, it is to be continually, <clears throat> excuse me, as a sacrifice to God. And God promises when we worship Him, He inhabits the praise of His people. And you know what else it does? It gives us strength to defeat our enemy. We're going to leave here in a little while, and we're going to go do our thing, whatever it is, and we're going to go to bed tonight, hopefully, and get up in the morning. And friend, I want to tell you, Satan's going to be there. He's going to be trying to get you not to serve Jesus Christ. Now, i got a couple of questions to ask you, and we're going to close. Now, think about this. What was your attitude when you came into the church house this morning? Puts you on the spot, doesn't it? I wish the Lord would give me a lot of answers over all y'all's heads right now. (laughs) What was your attitude when you left your house or your home this morning, were you fussing with your mate? Were you fussing at the children? Or were you happy, listen, 
that you get to come to church. So what was your attitude? Hey, were you prayed up? (laughs) Were you ready to praise the Lord when you got here? Were you ready to sing? I see some men that don't sing. I'm not getting on to anybody right here. I don't do that. But look here. Hey, fellas, I can't sing worth a lick. I didn't hear that. I can't sing, but look here. I want to make a joyful noise to the Lord. So were you ready to sing? Were you ready to give to the Lord? Were you ready to listen? Were you ready to obey what the Scripture says? Or did you come in the building with an attitude of casualness? When I was at Union University and I was going out on those weekend revivals, I want to tell you sometimes, I went into a church and it was so cold you had to put a coat on and it was the middle of the summer because you could not sense the presence of God. Listen, do you want to be strong in Christ? Do you want to get strong in Christ? Then you must learn how to worship. You are in charge. I want to say that again. You are in charge right now of whether or not you worship the true and the living God. This morning... I pray that God has spoken to you and He has said something to you in your heart about worship. Worship does not end when we leave the building. It continues. And it will continue on. Every woman... Hey, listen to me, Jessica. Every woman... She's picking her fingers... Every woman should be praising and worshiping the Lord. Amen? And you need to find a man that worships God too. If you don't, you're going to ask for a lot of problems. Is worship important, preacher? I guarantee you it is. It's right up here. Hickory with church. Let's worship. We're going to have a worshipful invitation. And if you need to be saved, just like we said earlier, we want you to come and give your life to Jesus. Hey, if you want to join our church, we want you to do that. Come down front this morning. If you want to recommit your life, hey, how about that? How about doing that? And the altar is always open for prayer. Would you very reverently stand with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that we can come together and we can worship. And I pray, dear God, if there's anything in this church where we're not worshiping you, let us throw it out the back door. Father, we want to worship and glorify you and you alone. Be blessed, Lord, in this invitation, and I pray that people will move because you are moving them. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.